In this video, we're going to do sample test questions that deal with the marginal cost of production. Question one, marginal cost is the difference between total cost and fixed cost. That is false. Total cost divided by the quantity of output. That is false. This would be the average total cost. C, the added cost of producing an additional unit of output. Yes, that is the definition of marginal cost. D, the change in total variable cost or change in total cost from producing one more unit of output. Question D is also correct, so the correct answer here is C and D. Mathematically, marginal cost is most closely associated with average, slope, median, or percent. Correct answer here is slope. Answer B, so marginal cost is a slope concept. It shows the change in one variable from a one unit change in another variable. Marginal cost can be written as, no, that would be average total cost. This is correct, so answer choice B is correct, the change in total cost divided by the change in output. The change in total variable cost divided by the change in output, that is also correct. And Answer choice D is also correct, just in shorthand notation here. The delta means change in. So change in total cost divided by change in output, which will also equal the change in total variable cost divided by the change in output. Answer B, C, and D are correct here. Answer choice C e then is correct. Question four, total cost at four units is $50, and total cost at five units of output is $60. What is the marginal cost of the fifth unit of output? So as we go from four to five units of output, total cost increases by $10. That would be the marginal cost. Answer choice A is correct. Question five. The firm's total cost is given by the following equation. What is the firm's marginal cost of production? Anytime this firm produces one more unit of output, total cost increases, increases by $4. So this number four here in front of the Q represents marginal cost. Every time Q goes up by one unit, total cost or total variable cost goes up by $4. And here, for example, at Q equals zero, total cost is 100. At Q equals one, plugging one into the equation, total cost is $104. So the marginal cost of the first unit then is the change in total cost or $4. Question six, the firm's total cost is given by C equals 2Q. Which of the following statements are true? Marginal cost is $2. That is true. Every time we produce one more unit of output, total cost goes up by $2. Average cost is $2. That is correct as well. The average cost here is going to be 2Q divided by Q, which is just 2. So that is correct. Average variable cost is $2. That's correct. Uh, total variable cost in this equation is 2Q. There are no fixed costs. There's no constant, so fixed costs are zero. So the total variable cost is 2Q, and if we divide total variable cost by Q, we get average variable cost, which is also $2. So all these answers are correct here. Question seven, total variable cost at 10 units of output is $25. Total variable cost at 11 units of output is $30. What is the marginal cost of the 11th unit? So it's just going to be the change in total variable cost from going from 10 to 11 units of output. That is going to be a $5 increase. So $5 is our answer here. That is the marginal cost. Question eight, if marginal cost is less than average total cost, so try to think of this graphically, marginal cost must be falling. That is not necessarily true. Marginal cost must be increasing. That is not necessarily true. Marginal cost could be increasing or decreasing, so that is correct. Answer choice C is correct. Average total cost must be rising. That is incorrect. Average total cost must be falling. That is correct. So the answer choice here is going to be C and E are the correct answers, C and E. If marginal cost is below average total cost, it is pulling it down, so it is falling. Question nine, suppose a firm pays a worker $100 to produce 20 units of output. What is the marginal cost of an additional unit? 
Correct answer here is going to be 100 divided by 20 or $5. So if you take the, the wage and divide it by the marginal product of labor, in this case, the marginal product of labor being 20, you'll get the marginal cost. So the correct answer here is A, $5. If marginal cost is above average cost or average total cost, marginal cost must be falling. That is incorrect. Marginal cost must be increasing. That is correct. Answer choice B is correct. Marginal cost could be increasing or decreasing. No, must be increasing. And finally, average cost must be rising. That is correct. Answer choice B and D are correct here. Answer choice E, then B and D are the correct answers. Suppose a firm hires a worker at $40 an hour and the worker's marginal product of labor per hour is 80. What is the marginal cost of an additional unit? So like our last problem, if we take the wage and divide it by the marginal product of labor, you'll get marginal cost. And in that case, 40 divided by 80 gives us a marginal cost of 50 cents. Answer choice D. Question 12. At three units of output, average cost is $6. At four units of output, average cost is $5. What is the marginal cost of the fourth unit? So as we go to three to four units, how much does total cost change? So the correct answer here is going to be answer choice A. And the way I did this was at three units of output, total cost is average total cost times quantity, three times six or 18. At four units of output, total cost is going to be the average total cost of $5 times the quantity of output, $4 or $20. So as we go from three to four units of output, total cost increases by $2, and that represents marginal cost. Answer choice A. Moving on. 13, at seven units of output, average cost is $7. At eight units of output, average cost or average total cost is $8. What is the marginal cost of the eighth unit? So this is just like the last problem. At seven units of output, at seven units of output, total cost is seven times seven or $49. At eight units of output, total cost is eight times eight or $64. The difference there of $15 represents the marginal cost of the eighth unit. Just a change in total cost from producing one more unit of output going from seven to eight. So answer choice A is correct here. Question 14. The slope of the total cost curve equals B, marginal cost. Question 15, the cost of producing one more apple pie is $2, which represents A, the marginal cost of production. That is correct. Answer choice A. Question 16, the slope of the total variable cost curve equals marginal cost. Answer choice B. So the slope of the total cost curve is marginal cost. The slope of the total variable cost curve is also marginal cost. Answer choice B. Question 16, at 10 units of output, total cost is $200. At 14 units of output, total cost equals $300. What is the marginal cost between 10 and 14 units of output? So we're going to look at the change in total cost and divide it by the change in output. So in this case here, answer choice D is correct. So how did I get that? The change in total cost is $100. The change in output going from 10 to 14 is 4 units, so 100 divided by 4 is $25. If marginal cost exceeds average variable cost, average variable cost is rising. That is the correct answer. Answer choice D. Question 18, the firm's total cost is given by the following equation. The firm's marginal cost blank with output. Correct answer here is B. The firm's marginal cost increases with output. If you were to graph this cost equation, it would be increasing at an increasing rate. So the slope would be getting steeper and steeper as we produce more output or move along the quantity axis. So in this case, marginal cost would be increasing with output. Diminishing marginal returns to labor implies that 
correct answer here is marginal cost increases. And answer choice C is also correct. It becomes increasingly more expensive to produce additional units of output. So A and C mean the same thing. So answer choice D is correct. If marginal product of labor blank, marginal cost blank. If marginal product of labor blank, marginal cost blank. If marginal product of labor decreases, marginal cost increases. So the correct answer here is B. If we have diminishing marginal returns to labor, that causes marginal cost to increase. So answer choice B. Question 21, the total cost at 23 units of output is $434. The marginal cost of the 24th unit is $6. What is the total cost of 24 units of output? Correct answer here is A. Um, when we produce the 24th unit of output, total cost goes up by $6. So 434 plus 6 is our answer of $440. Answer choice A. We have this table over here. What is the marginal cost of the first unit of output? So in this row here, we want to calculate the marginal cost as we go from zero to one units of output. So the way I'm going to do that is first at zero units of output, total variable cost is zero and total cost will just equal total fixed cost. So at zero units of output, total cost is $100. At one unit of output, total cost is $110. So the increase in total cost as we go from zero to one units of output is $10. Answer choice A. Question 22, what is the marginal cost of the second unit of output? So in this row here, where output equals two, we wanna get the marginal cost here. So the way I'm gonna do that is, we're going to first figure out what total cost is at two units of output. And we know total fixed cost is $100. That doesn't change with output. So if total fixed cost is $100 and we add $25 of variable cost to it, we get total cost of $125. So when we go from $110 to $125, that is a $15 increase in total cost, which represents marginal cost. Answer choice B. So again, to recap here, Total cost right here is going to be $125. When we go from $110 to $125, that is a $15 increase, which represents marginal cost. And question 23, what is the marginal cost of the third unit of output? So in this third row, what is the, the marginal cost of this third unit? Well, we already established that at two units of output, total cost is $125. At three units of output, total cost is going to be 150. How did I get that? I took total fixed cost and I added to it $50 of variable cost. So when we go from 125 to 150, that is a $25 increase. A simpler way of doing this, uh, question 23, would just look at the change in total variable cost. When we go from 25 to 50, that is a $25 increase. That also represents marginal cost. Okay, moving on. When the marginal cost intersects average total cost, so when the marginal cost curve intersects the average total cost curve, what is true? All these answers are correct. Average total cost is minimized, so we're at the bottom point of the average total cost curve. The efficient scale is achieved and the marginal cost slopes upwards. So all answers are correct. 25, when marginal cost intersects average variable cost, average variable cost is minimized, that is correct. The firm is at its shutdown point, that would also be correct. The minimum point of the average variable cost curve is the considered the shutdown point. Marginal cost slopes upwards, that is correct. D, all of these answers are correct. Question 26, which curve is the perfectly competitive firm supply curve? C, marginal cost. 27, consider the cost function. Marginal cost is always greater than average total cost. That is actually false. In this example, marginal cost is always less than average total cost. At Q equals one, average total cost is $12 and marginal cost is two. That is correct. 
marginal cost is always less than average total cost. That is correct given this cost function. So answer choice D is correct, B and C. Uh, to note here, average total cost is just total cost divided by the quantity of output. So 10 divided by Q and 2Q divided by Q gives us this answer here. So notice that Q equals 1. Average total cost is indeed $12. And marginal cost, uh, as we did some other numerical problems, is just going to be this number right here in front of the Q. Every time we produce one more unit of output, total cost will always go up by $2. All right, that's it.